you're on. Hi Karen, it's Charlotte and I'm here with your beautiful baby Peter and we are getting ready to see what we've got to help Peter want to connect more and relax more and just be a better partner for you. So I appreciate you wanting me to work on him and I'm excited. So the first thing that I'm probably going to do, hey buddy, is a little bit of a leading exercise because when I when I went in his stall, he was very much, he saw me there, but he didn't really want to come up and connect. So I would love it if we can get his body a little looser and help him connect. Can I right, get we'll move out of Kathy's way. Well, I guess maybe we can start out with sort of looking at him. Obviously, Peter is gorgeous. When I look at one, I look at them knowing that mind and body are both the same thing. So he will physically show us where he is holding emotional stuff. And if we can get him to let go of any cramped up or blocked emotional stuff, we can really help him relax and connect and be in the present moment. interesting to look at this as we go today because I would say he's holding a lot of emotional stuff in his belly and probably as we work we're going to see some vertical lines vertical fascial lines come up in his belly and he'll start to like crunch his abs a little bit and lift his back more. Horses that have a little bit of a low back if you're wanting to fix that often are really horses that try really really hard but they're holding in some stuff. So I think we're, we're going to work on this. And this back right here, he's sort of blocked right through here, holding some emotional stuff through here. That hocks a little out behind him. So I would say this rear end is holding some stuff. Those two, his hocks are very narrow together. We don't have a lot of space between those hind legs. And he's not wanting to stand super square behind. I think that should change. And in looking at this, I would say he's holding some emotional stuff over here too. So we're going to work on that. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> so the first, what we're going to do is something that I call, it's a leading exercise I call, so you want to dance. And it's going to help me see how is he balanced right eye to left eye because many horses that have um, an inability to really connect big or relax in a big way have an imbalance in the right and the left eye like they're good with people most of them are good with people out of the left eye but they're not so good with people out of the right eye of course that's not all of them you'll have some horses that are so damaged on the left that they prefer people on the right but we're going to check to see is he good left to right eye. I'm going to walk back and forth and I'm going to ask him to cross in front of me and set stuff up for him to cross his back feet and cross his front feet to see where has he got stiffness. One of the things that I have found is that when the horses cross their back feet, it tends to light up the right side of their brain. And when they cross their front feet, it tends to light up the left side of their brain. So if I'm in my leading exercise, if I can help that horse cross those, set it up so the horse can cross the back feet or cross the front feet, we can start getting him present and thinking and using his brain versus being defensive and in survival. And all right, you ready, buddy? Now, the fact he keeps doing all this with his mouth is really cool, it's really good. He's releasing emotional stuff through his mouth. There, the reason that I like this is there's a vet, a German massage trainer and vet named Gerd Hirschman. And Gerd says that he believes that horses have an upper muscle chain, all the muscles at the top of their body, and they have a lower muscle chain, all the muscles in the bottom of their body. He thinks that energy in the horse clears 
from the back to the front. He says that the end of the upper muscle chain is in the horse's pole, and the end of the lower muscle chain is in the horse's tongue. I compared that to some of this work that I'd done with right brain and left brain, and that had come about from learning about this brain gym thing that was created for learning disabled children. And I'd compared the movements that they did to the ones I did. That's how we figured out across the back feet is right brain, left brain across the front feet is left. Well, I got to noticing that I think that the top upper muscle chain, the top of their body, tends to correspond to the left side of the brain. And that lower muscle chain, or the bottom of the body, tends to correspond with the right side of the brain. So the right brain is going to be your emotions, your big picture, your patterns. And when your horse has emotions, they're going to release it by licking or biting or doing all this stuff he's doing with his mouth. So if we can get that mouth to be active and let go of stuff, we're going to clear him faster. And this big belly tells us, hmm, we got some stuff to clear. We can change the way that that looks. Now, by just standing here, giving him a little undemanding time, like me sort of explaining some of this to you, do you notice how much more under him his back feet are? And they're way more square. And the hocks themselves are significantly wider apart. So a bunch of the stuff that I do may look like we're doing nothing and be painfully boring to watch. But if you know, how, if you have the awarenesses to know to look at the squareness of the feet and the width apart of the feet, then you can kind of get an idea that, whoa, she did something when she was doing all that talking. All right, you ready to do some leaning exercise? I think he likes me, huh? Look at you. I think all this licking. Yeah, horses like your energy mail. It's almost like a, the horses think they're really a drug and an oxygen source. They always have to come up and lick it. That's all right. All right, so I'm going to start walking. you to stay on that side. Part of this game or this leading exercise has to do with quarters. And I picture it like I'm standing in the middle of a clock. Directly in front of me is 12 o'clock. To my right is 3 o'clock. To my left is 9 o'clock. And directly behind me is 6 o'clock. When I am leading him, he's got sort of a safe spot. Six, six to nine if I'm leading him on my left. When I put him on one side or the other, he needs to stay there. And if he's pushing over into the other side, I'm gonna take up, sort of hold the space without being predatory and just twirl this rope. That makes it uncomfortable for him to be over there. There you go. And hmm, even though I'm not looking at him and this is not directed toward him, he was pretty sensitive about that rope swinging. And I notice when I go to walk and he gets ahead of me and then I'm like, oh, so you want to dance? He's a little nervous when I change 
things that I'm doing. And that we need to work on here, bud. So we're gonna walk along. I want him on my left side. Good, we're gonna turn around and walk back. telling him that he's wrong I'm just like la 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 and he moved back in his quarter does that make sense Sharon so there he's kind of drifting that way again so I'm just going hoo, 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 hoo. your so create what fish usually ends up looking like like he keeps drifting to the right usually, you're creating your bubble yes and usually if he's going to constantly be drifting that way that's going to be a horse that kind of leans on that right shoulder when you're riding it. And drops it. And kind of drops that shoulder. It could be a horse that, when he goes to change leads, left to right, might miss the lead change behind. I don't know that at all. He may be the most perfect lead changer ever. But if I'm leading one and it's got a lead change issue, usually we can work on it doing this leading exercise. And it is so non-complicated. and have a little more munger they're not they don't tend to be the calmer horses so i'm like yay i love it that you did that so i'm going to switch my hands say so you want to dance and i'm going to send him in front of me good so we're getting some good crossing nice the hip goes by lift my hand up i'd say that hind leg seems a little stiffer and i'm going to walk again yay up oh, there kind of looking off into the pasture. He's not really sure what to think about. And I don't care if he's far away from me as long as it's in that quarter. Here he broke the line. Here's my hands. He's going to switch. Same. Change. Beautiful. Good boy. Then he felt a little calm. ask him to cross. And really, he doesn't need to be emotional there. He stayed over better on that side that time. And this feels more peaceful. Wait for him to break that line. There he is. My hand. Is this making more sense? Thank you. Yes. He Much does it. He's a little clearer. Yeah. It'll do great things for them. Ah. 
Ah, so this feels quieter. This feels more relaxed. help him kind of ooh, lift up and create a little bend in that body without being too pushy or complicated. <laughs> ah, nice. Our head is going down. He's doing better. Staying in his little box, in his corner. Great job, buddy. So this feels better to me. So we'll kind of move on.